Hey guys, David Vos here. Oh man, it's another beautiful day in paradise on Red Mesa. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm having a good day just because I know my Lord and Savior is getting ready to come. I've had enough of this old, sick, rotten world. I don't know about you. But friends, I got some good news to tell you and some bad news. I mean, you you know about the bad news, but I'm going to make sure you understand there is a lot of good news. There is a lot of good news. We've talked about how the Lord's going to prepare a table for the saints in the presence of our of our enemies. But I want to give you some more evidence now that we are probably going into the great tribulation in the book in the month of April of this year. We have said that at least, at least in my own mind, and as far as I can see, the world could not possibly go beyond 2028. And that means we got to throw in three and a half years before 2028. And so somewhere around 2024, the Great Tribulation has to begin. But we've done some more research and we found that it's actually probably going to be in December of 2027. There's reasons for that, and we're going to cover that deeper in another video. I don't have a lot of time today. I'm off to Arizona to pick up some tarps. I'm going to be getting some water catching things. I'm going to be getting more grains, and we're preparing, friends. So I haven't had a lot of time, if you've noticed. I'm trying to do the videos because I know they're important. But I have a lot of things I'm doing. So give me a little bit of, of, of a break here uh, in the sense of, you know, I'll try to do my best to get a video out every day. But friends, it's upon my heart to share with you this information today. It's very important. I believe we're, and I'm, I'm going to give you some more evidence why I believe this is going to happen in April. Could I be wrong? Of course. Because nobody knows the day and the hour and human beings make mistakes. But I do believe that we're not to be in darkness, that that day would take us as a thief. Because the whole world, it shall take them as a thief in the night, but it's not taking me as a thief. I'm preparing. And I hope you are too. I'm going to get some oil in my lamp. That's the most important thing. Okay, the grain in your storehouse is also important. Getting out of the city is getting out of the world is very important because you'll share with her in her sins if you don't, the Bible says. But the only way you're going to even do any of that is to get the oil in your lamp. And the oil is what makes the lamp bright and makes it burn. So you got light. Light is truth and it is love, right? If you don't have that love, this is how we know we're in Christ if we have love. If you don't have that love and you're not helping your neighbor, and you haven't learned to forgive everybody and start preaching the gospel, then you don't have the light and your lamp has gone out, my friends. So go hurry up before. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not trying to say go to the city and buy it because then you won't make it because that's what the scripture says. They went off to buy some and when they went off to buy it, you know, the, the, the Lord came and they were, they didn't make it. So what I'm saying is get on your knees and pray. The Lord is merciful and find him now and get your testimony, friends. But I found out that about this extraordinary eclipse and, and half the United States is preparing for it like it's some sort, sort of a doomsday into the world where they got troops. And I think they're not really worried about the sun or the eclipse that's coming on the 8th of April as much as they are knowing that they're planning on being a great war at the end of April, that will begin. And they, and so they're going to get use that ex, as an excuse to get into place. Because I believe that one of the things that they're going to do is there's not going to be any financial system. There are not going to be any banks that will collapse and, and there are not going to be no cash. And there's not going to be any internet for a while. So you better find out where your friends are and your loved ones. And during that time, if you're in the city and there's no internet, then there, there's not going to be any money. So they won't pay the police and they won't be out to help you. <laughs> I guarantee 
when the police do come back online, it'll be as military. They'll change their sheriff badge or their police city police badge. I'll trade that in for a military suit. Because, just as they did with ISIS, they went in and destroyed the whole country and then they took all the young men and said, now if you work for us, we'll give you food. I was noticing that if you go by these military places, I went through New Mexico, clear the truth of consequences again to get another uh, generator yesterday. And I'm going through all these military bases. They have them all over through New Mexico. And these big fences, and you can look in there and you can see that they have these markets where military individuals can go and get food and get they got hardware they can do it they can get anything they want there and it's a little cheaper than what we pay but i will guarantee that when the bank goes down and the rest of the world cannot find food the military will be able to have food and during the time when people are starving they're going to need an army to take us out and they got to lure them in so i say look no food no food but if you want to join the military we got all the food you need Anybody who will bow to the beast and join the military or join the government and harass their fellow man, you risk your life, sure, but hey, you'll be fine because you're in the military, you got guns. And all the poor peasants out there will be told that if they don't they're they're they don't put a mat, you know, M-A-S-K or get a S-H-O-T or do whatever it is that they gotta do. Because look, the rest of the world, if you're not in the military will be given commodities as well. But you got to get up and go down, you know, to the corner and get in line. And there'll be riots and people pushing and shoving in the military uh, might protect that line so you can get to the FEMA camp. But once you get to the FEMA camp, friends, you're done. And if you stay in the city, there'll be riots and destruction and there's no food there. So if you're in the city, if you're in the world of any in any shape, way or form, you're going to die. But only a third of you right now, okay? This They probably just, just teasing, right? They'll just shut the bank down for maybe 90 days or something. And not everybody will die. A lot of people will survive. But those who survive will say, look, if you want to survive, you want to eat, you got to join the military. And then they'll go and try to take our GUNs and they'll be going into neighborhoods and saying, look, you're jeopardizing the world health because you're out here in the woods pooping on the ground and that's just unhealthy so you got to leave we're going to burn you out we're going to take you out we're taking you to fema i mean this is going to be mostly in cities if you can get into the wilderness the bible says you'll be safe he'll prepare a table for you in the wilderness so one of the signs that we've gone over in other videos we've talked about is the dates that jesus probably died near 27 because he was born in 6 BC. And this is according to all the scholars. And he says in, in, in Hosea that he'll be gone for two days and on the third day he'll, he'll raise us up. And that's 2,000 years. And Peter says there'll be a day uh, to, of, of the Lord. It's like a 1,000 years. He's not slow. And if you notice, he's quoting from Psalm 109, which says it's a 1,000 years for the day and 1,000 years for the night because every day has a night and a day, right? Every 24-hour period. So Peter says it will be 2,000 years and Christ will return. Here we are, friends. And Israel became a nation, not necessarily in 1948, but actually in December of 1947. And then 70 years to the day, Donald Trump declared Jerusalem the capital, which fulfilled the prophecy that the Messiah will fulfill, which means that Trump has been declared the Messiah and he has declared Israel the Lord's kingdom. And you will get the mark of the beast once the Antichrist becomes the next world president, will be Trump, probably. Remember, Netanyahu means the messenger of Yahoo. So Netanyahu is just there as a stand-in to usher in the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist comes, he will have charge or he will gain power over the saints. And they will surround Jerusalem and destroy it. That's what the Bible tells you. So this is about, we know this is about to happen because Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you know that the desolating of her is near. And we know that that means that there will be three and a half years of tribulation and people are going to die and starve. And, and that's what the Bible has been telling, telling us for years. 
And I'm telling you that one more evidence is the fact that they're de declaring a state of emergency because of an eclipse on April the 8th. And then by the 21st, we're going to have this meteor shower they claim is going to be the most magnificent meteor shower that they've ever recorded. I suspect that we're going to have darkness for at least an hour or so. A third of the day could just represent a small portion of the day. I don't think it'll just be a minute or two. And I think that will be your sign. Here's your sign right in your forehead, right? <laughs> if you don't get it at that point and flee into the mountains, you've got that last chance. When you see the war begin or start to begin over there as they surround Jerusalem, if you don't get out of the world that you might not share with her in her sins, friends, you're taking your life in your own hand. Well, let me show you what Revelation chapter 8 tells you about this. So in Revelation chapter 8, it tells us that there are two events where the sky is falling or something of that nature. Because most of the time when you go somewhere to look up in the Bible where the stars are going to fall, Jesus says, after the tribulation, the stars shall fall from heaven. The sun will not give its light. And then he's going to come and gather his saints. And, and it's over at the end of the tribulation. We know that by the end of the 1,335 days, it is over. There will be a three and a half year tribulation. But what about the beginning of the tribulation? Does it just happen out of nowhere? Or does something do we have signs and events that we, we we're told about? Well, notice that in chapter 8, now this is before chapter 12 and 13, stuff where it talks about the Great Tribulation specifically. It says, when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before deity, and to them were given seven trumpets. Remember, Jesus comes at the last trumpet. And remember, there seems to be seven things that unfold at the end of every seventh thing, like seven trumpets, seven vials, seven bowls, seven thunders, and all these kinds of things. <clears throat> but this is seven angels which stood before the Lord, and they were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, and that should he offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came up with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before deity out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. Now, normally you have to understand when we're talking about the coals of the altar, it's where there is a mercy. They call it the mercy seat. And so when the coal reached Isaiah's lip, he was atoned. And when Jesus said, when you forgive people, you're casting coals of fire upon their head. We're talking about we're, we're atoning them at one minute. We're, by forgiving them, we're healing them. And so remember, there's prayers going on and the prayers are being offered to the Lord. And the Lord said, I love you. And he does something with the coals. And it was cast to the earth. So there's probably some kind of mercy and forgiveness on, on some section of the world. In verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there were followed hail and fire mingled with blood. They were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees was burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up. Now, this is not the end of the tribulation because the end of the tribulation is the end of the world. The, the whole world would be burned up according to the apostle Peter. But we're here we're talking about just a third. And verse eight, and the second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire. It was cast into the sea. The third part of the sea became blood. Now, usually a mountain represents some kind of government, some high and exalted state of the 
firm foundational earth, which earth represents stability, but a mountain is usually a, a, a great government. Like the, the great mountain would be the ruling empire of the world. And it would either be something like, you know, it could be, you might consider it Washington, D.C. or the United States. Or it could be something like the Vatican or, you know, where the power of the world rests with the Bavarians or something. And when the mountain is cast into the sea, a third part of the sea became blood. Not all the sea, just a third. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea that had life died. And a third part of all the ships were destroyed. But this isn't the end of the world. This is just a third. And this is, this is probably at the beginning of the tribulation. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon, isn't it interesting that this star we've always said is Satan. The Antichrist is coming. This is a sign of his coming. Well, he comes at the beginning of the 1,260 days to reign over the world for three and a half years. But notice he's, he's a burning as a lamp. Remember, John was a lamp. They went out to meet him to see this little light. But Jesus was a light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world, the higher consciousness. So then this is, again, an indication that this Antichrist is Yahweh himself, who was the lawgiver, which is a light to our feet, a lamp to our path. It is the law, but it also brings judgment. So, of course, judgment coming to the earth would represent the fallen angel who made the curse and the bondage, the law. And when that lamp or the law comes down to the earth, oh, woe for the earth, because you see, now we've got wrath. And it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Elsewhere, we've seen that there's a war in heaven at the beginning of the tribulation and Michael and his angels battles with the devil and his angels and and Satan and his angels are cast out. Well, this is the casting out, the fallen angel who falls. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. And he said this when people were casting out devils from human beings. What that means is that there is going to be a group of individuals in this world, the anointed, that all the devils will be cast out of their minds and their actions. And they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the upper room, which is the higher consciousness, will be purified. And no more will the devil be able to deceive the elect. And during the elect, the great 144,000 brothers and sisters, the church of the firstborn, will have the Holy Spirit be purified, will be praying, and will be causing fire to come down from heaven and the waters to be turned into blood anytime we want. And there'll be a great duel between us and the two false prophets. And so the star is called Wormwood and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Well, the waters is truth or information. And so you're not going to be able to get much information during the tribulation. It's going to be bitter. Bad news. Devils are coming down because they're no longer in the saints, but now they're going to run rampant to deceive the entire world because they have but a short time. And so this is at the beginning of the tribulation when this mountain or I would suggest maybe the ruling power of the world will be gone. We'll no longer have that power. Some kind of anarchy. Because in elsewhere in chapter 6 of Revelation, we see the seven seals. And the first seal is a white horse, which has got a bow, which is a, bow, a toxic bow. We've talked about that in the Greek. And it has to do with pharma. And he goes to conquer. And then he says the, the next horse is war. And they, they were given to take peace from the earth. So remember the seven seals start and then at the very end of the seven seals, we got the seven thunders. And it always seems to kind of give you the same events, but in intensity, it just it keeps increasing. But the beginning of the tribulation is when peace is taken from the earth and famine and pestilence follows. And that will happen at the beginning of the tribulation. And Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, know that the 1,260 years days 1,260 days will commence, right? These are days for meting out justice. And two-thirds of Israel will be completely wiped off the face of the earth. 
And I believe that will happen about two months in the month of April or so, somewhere in there. And so they're going to, what, probably like drop a big bomb on Israel. And the rest of them are going to go into exile to be purged. Well, that's two thirds. On the flip side, the rest of the world is just one third. Then two thirds of the world is left to go through the Great Tribulation. And many will repent because there's a great multitude that come out of the Great Tribulation. They'll wash the robes and blood of the Lamb. And they'll all be beheaded because they refuse the mark of the beast. But the 144,000 get the seal of the living deity because their upper room where they're at, the mind is cleansed. And they will be uh, like the stars that shine for brightness to bring the many to righteousness. But the other stars have fallen. So in a symbolic sense, the peoples of the world that seem to be the, the teachers and the, and the light bearers and, and the, the authorities will fall. And vice versa, the saints will rise. So in one sense, the stars are people who are like teachers and people of authority. So people like Bill Gates and you know certain ones are going to fall during that time. And one angry individual who is put to death because he gets a, a wound by the sword in his head, he will come to life and they come back up out of the bottom of this pit. So in the spiritual sense, the devil will literally be thrown to the confines of the earth in the affairs of men and will enter into this man who dies by a wound in the head. And I believe it will be by means of AI because they make an image unto this beast or the little horn who speaks. And the image they allow to speak and give it life and that's like the resurrection, just like Christ was resurrected. But Jesus, it says, was and is and is coming, but the Antichrist was and is not, but yet shall ascend. And the reason he is not is because he will die and he will not be coming, but he will be rising from the bottomless pit for a short time. And then there's the great tribulation. But it says the waters are made bitter. So be careful, friends, of what you believe from this point forward, because there will be no light from the sun, no truth, no righteousness. The law will be turned to blood. There will be, for a while, there will be total anarchy until the Antichrist brings about his one world government. And the demons will be running around because they're the stars that fell. And they'll be coming out of the bottomless pit, which is your subconscious. And verse 12, and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten. Notice it's not the sun that is put out. No more light of the sun. That happens at the end of the tribulation and all the stars fall and there'll be a new heavens and a new earth. But at this point, at the beginning of the tribulation, only a third of the sun. What does that mean? A third of the sun and a third of the moon and a third part of the stars. Not all of them, but just a third. Well, here's what it, what it says. It'll, it'll explain it. So as the third part of them was dark and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. Friends, on April the 8th this year, and we're going to show you that, there is going to be an eclipse. They claim it's probably going to be, I mean, you know, they always say probably don't know, but the astrologers or I say the astronomers or the scientists are saying, that this particular eclipse should be one of the biggest eclipses that they've ever recorded. And it's going to go across the entire United States and go to Europe. Now, they say it should only be dark for a few minutes. But according to this, it will be dark for one third of the day. Now, if we're talking about daylight, which is obviously what it's talking about, and daylight, what, lasts... Uh, 10 hours, 12 hours, I don't know. It should last for three or four hours, this darkness. And that will surprise everyone. And you see, I think they already know it because places like Texas and all around the United States, different cities, Ohio and places, are saying that they're going to have a state of emergency on that day. And the National Guard's going to be employed. Why? For an eclipse? But now, get this. On the 21st of April... There is going to be this crazy 
meteor shower that's going to look like stars falling from heaven. And they claim it may be the brightest, most extraordinary meteor shower that has ever occurred. I'm just telling you what some have said. You can look that up. Well, that's April the 21st. Guess what? Passover comes, I think, April 30th or something. It might be 31st, but I think it's April, at the end of April. And I believe that is when the tribulation begins because, you know, it has to last 1,300, or it has to last for three and a half years. And if it ends in the fall with the great overthrow of the world, then it will begin in the spring. We've talked about that. And we know that they're planning on, I believe, they're, they're telling everybody they're going to have this event where the banks will go down. Now, I believe the reason the banks will go down is they're going to make them go down. And then people will be hungry. This is also at the very same, you know, like just days, the first thing that's going to happen is going to be war declared, right? They'll take peace from the earth. It'll be a terrible thing, friends. And then famine and pestilence follows. And according to this, now it may not be absolutely literal, but it seems to be about a third of the world is going to die in two or three months in the beginning of the tribulation. The rest of them begin to die and fall off as we go, and they still wouldn't repent, and another plague, and they still wouldn't repent, and another plague. This is the day of the Lord, friends. And so it says, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh buddy, we never had that kind of woeing from any angels before. Saying, whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Because by the end of the last trumpet, we're all going to be changed. And between that and this, there will be a great tribulation, Jesus said, that will never occur again or like uh, has never occurred before. And unless those days were cut short, no flesh would be saved. But it's interesting, in the book of Mark, it says he will shorten the days on the count of the elect. He will bring those days short. So we don't even know if we're going to go all the way through the tribulation in 1,260 days. The Lord has left it open in the Bible that he could bring it to a close before then. We may only go through a few months of this tribulation. It may be so severe. So Jesus may return in just a few months and the end of the world, or it could be, but it will not be longer because the angel raised his hand and swore it'll be a, for a time, times and a half a time. And when the bringing to a close, the end of the power of the holy ones, in other words, the power of the Jerusalem and this present system will be brought to a finish by that time. So, total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024 over Mexico, United States, and Canada. It says the duration of totality will be up to four minutes, 27 seconds. Almost double that of the great American eclipse of 21st of August 2017. The 2017 total solar eclipse was witnessed by about 20 million people from Oregon to South Carolina. But the upcoming 2024 Great American Eclipse is sure to be witnessed by many millions more. Because of what they saw, the exquisite beauty of the sun's corona hanging in the suddenly darkened sky, many millions more will know that a total Solar eclipse is something truly worth seeing. In the United States, totality will begin in Texas. So it's going to go up right through the middle of Mexico, through the heartland and basically the whole eastern coast of the United States and up through Canada. And then it heads off towards Europe. And it says it'll end at sunset, not far from Spain. The longest duration will be near Torino, Mexico at 4 minutes and 27 seconds. So, you know, not a big deal, right? But then why are they bringing out the National Guard? Let me show you. Texas County declares state of emergency ahead of the total solar e eclipse. San Antonio, Bell County declares state of emergency for total solar eclipse. 
Um, Arkansas Division of Emergency. City of Temple to host three eclipse town halls ahead of the April 8th solar eclipse. Hundreds to marry during the total solar eclipse in Arkansas. State of emergency response. Agencies take part. Saturday, April 6th, will activate its emergency operational center. A quick reference a map of eclipse-related events. So there's Arkansas. Ohio.gov, Ohio Total Solar Eclipse Emergency Management Agency. People within a 124-mile wide band in the state of Ohio will experience a total solar eclipse. What are local government offices planning during the April 8th eclipse? NEO officials warn of traffic congestion during April 8th eclipse in northeast Ohio around 315. Summit County Sheriff urges residents to stay home the day of the solar eclipse. They expect crowds at parks for April 8th eclipse. Emergency preparedness at the April 2024 total eclipse in Ohio. Richard County, Cuyahoga Valley, Stark County predicts tourism boom. But yeah, this is a big deal. Now look at this. Lyrid Meteor Shower 2024. It says it occurs between April 16th and the 25th. So it's not just one day, but there for a week or so, you're going to see these stars falling directly after April 8th, when the moon turns into blood, you'll see the stars falling. The average Lyrid shower produces 15 to 20 meteors per hour. Some years, the Lyrid meteor shower intensifies and can produce up to 100 meteors per hour in what's called an outburst, but it's difficult to predict exactly when that will happen. The Lyrids are one of the oldest recorded showers, Cook said with observations going back to 687 BC. You don't need any kind of special equipment to see the meteors. Just look up at the dark sky, be patient, enjoy the show. But look at this, it says there's another shower. The Eta Aquarids that overlaps with the Lyrids. And the Eta Aquarids begin on April the 19th with the moon in its waxing gibbles phase and continues until May 28th. So there's going to be stars falling for quite some time during this period. April 21st, Lyrid meteor shower. It couldn't have better timing this year. It coincides with a waning gibbous moon. This means the moon is less visible, so the skies are darker than normal. If clouds cooperate, the meteor shower may welcome up to 100 meteors per hour at its peak from April 21st through April 23rd. From full moons to eclipses, there's a lot to add to your calendar if you're planning on doing some stargazing or sky watching this year. This year's astronomical events will offer the chance to catch a glimpse of a total solar eclipse and two other lunar eclipses, a dozen meteor showers, and if we're lucky, some northern lights as well. Remember it says, the stars shall be falling and on earth distress among men. But look at this. A stunning comet could photobomb this April's total solar eclipse. On April 8th, a swath of Mexico, the United States, and Canada will be treated to a stunning total solar eclipse. The second such eclipse to be widely visible in the United States in less than a decade. But this time, a comet may photobomb the display. The dirty ice ball, officially known as Comet 12P Ponds Brooks, was discovered in 1812. The comet takes a little more than 71 years to orbit the sun in a path that sends it zipping out past Neptune's orbit and then diving back towards the inner solar system. During the Comet 12P's current path, professional and amateur astronomers have observed a series of outbursts from this hurtling ice ball that appeared to give it horns, earning it 
nicknames such as the Millennial Falcon and the Devil Comet. Is that the devil that's thrown down from heaven? This is one of the brightest comets in history, said a planetary scientist. Comet 12P will make its closest approach on April the 21st, less than two weeks after the total solar eclipse. The timing means that the comet will appear about 25 degrees away from the sun during totality. Just how visible Comet 12P may be during totality is still uncertain. Although the sun will be blocked at that time, the sky won't reach true nighttime hues. It will be more like twilight, and our home star's outer atmosphere or corona will be shining as well. Based on the current observation during totality, the comet may be just barely visible to the naked eye or sky watchers may need binoculars to see it. But it says, but if the comet cooperates, it could appear much brighter. That's because Comet 12P is known for its dramatic outbursts, during which the ice ball loses a substantial amount of material, both ice that sublimates into gas and dust shed into the surrounding space. This causes the comet to appear brighter by increasing the size of the fuzzy halo around it. It has some spectacular outbursts. Some researchers have theorized that cracks are opening up in the comet's icy body or that cliffs on its potentially jagged surface are collapsing. It could just collapse some crazy thing, you know, in the sky and some major event or a sign in the heavens might very well happen, friends. Whatever the cause of 12P's outburst, a well-timed one could turn Comet 12P's appearance at totality from subtle to stunning. That said, our limited records from the Comet's previous close approaches to the sun suggest that its outburst may subside as it hurtles closer to our star. Although total solar eclipse and bright comets are each relatively rare phenomenon, Comet 12P wouldn't be the first to make an appearance during totality. Anyway, I don't know, friends. I'm just letting you know that this seems to be another sign that we might be heading into the Great Tribulation. I will tell you this. We no longer are under the same financial system. It's already been switched over to this digital financial system that Trump gave us. But we're still using cash and it's going to flip, they claim, in April. And some are saying the bank will be down for some period of time. And if that happens, friends, I guarantee, especially since there's going to be this war started in Jerusalem, I guarantee if that happens, we are going to be in the Great Tribulation. Please prepare. I love you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.